because apart from attending a field courses at Juniper Hall most years, um, I, um, I spent six years at Royal Holloway College under the uh, watchful eye of somebody who watches your activities fairly closely, John Ponting. He was, my, yes. <laughs> he was my supervisor uh, back in the 70s. Um, and in fact, I had nothing to do with ladybirds in those days. I, I studied moths. And uh, in fact, I only moved to ladybirds when I moved to Cambridge in 1980. But the thing that sort of caught my attention was they were going on about these five gold medals. And in fact, if I'm sort of a bit sort of dark under the eyes, it's because I didn't actually yeah. stay out loud. <laughs> it was just the Harvard pants on But it occurred to me that five gold medals is only 16 years. He's been doing it for 20. He and the other recorders. And it, it is a labor of love. I want you to look around yourselves for a moment. Just look at each other. Um, you are quintessentially British, <laughs> and many people, both in Britain and worldwide, would consider you to be a little bit eccentric. <laughs> we, we have a tradition in Britain. We are the greatest natural history observers, recorders, and so on, anywhere in the world. I've just come back from Alberta in Canada. In, in 10 days, with a man called John Acorn, Dr. John Acorn, we managed to find two new species of ladybird for Alberta. Um, it's simply because nobody's ever bothered to look before. Now, that's not easy to do in an English county, although Roger has managed quite well. <laughs> um, the briny ladybird, um, which is this odd, probably originally Mediterranean species that feeds on white briny here, on cooker bits, uh, cucumbers, zucchini, and so on around the Mediterranean. That has only arrived in the last probably five or six years. We don't know the exact date, but it's only been recorded for that period. Now, here is a tremendous opportunity to watch something whilst the survey is already there, the recorders are already in place, to watch it spread, see how it does go, and perhaps speculate on why it is able to spread. Is the climate changing? Um, is it simply that it happened to get bought here and it was always a favourable habitat for it? Will it actually stop around the London area where the temperatures are a bit warmer? Or will it actually manage to move out into more rural settings? This is the sort of information that, I mean, Roger says that I produce scientific papers and the odd book and so on. I'm a professional now. But, I mean, John knows, God knows why I became a professional, because I was an amateur. But, you know, for a long time before I became a professional. But he trained me, and um, some people seem to think I do a reasonable job. Um, but amateurs still have a tremendous part to play. If you try and get funding for something that says survey in it, you can't. It's almost impossible as a university academic to get funding of that sort. So don't bother to try. But we rely so much on the goodwill, dedication, and just endurance of people, members of the general public, who are interested, they want to do it. Now, if you read the book, you will see, Roger explains how the survey was done. This is a man who, as far as I know, doesn't drive, doesn't possess a car. Uh, he I drives, see. but doesn't possess a car, perhaps. No, he doesn't. Yeah. Uh, 20 years ago, I, I gave up, I was too dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> he has been to either virtually every two kilometres square or every two kilometres square in this county over the last 20 years, most of them very, very many times. I met Roger first in 19, I think it was about 86, 87, at Box Hill amongst the group of people who've come to do a, a weekend called Lucky at Lady Bay. And there was one or two. There's another one there, young Vic, uh, and who was completely different from the rest. The rest sort of thought, well, there are these things called ladybirds. And when I told them that they were just beetles that were colourful, you know, it, 
you, you trod on beetles, um, and, and you, you put ladybirds on your finger to watch them fly away. Um, but here were two who were different. They knew it all. I mean, they knew everything I was trying to tell them. And it's their enthusiasm and the other recorders who have kept at it over 20 years that I think we should celebrate with this book. Um, when I read it, there were loads of things that were new to me. It is a great read. Now, Roger has actually done himself a disservice by saying he wrote it for the people of Surrey. I hope if you've got friends, relatives who live anywhere else in Britain, there's only one little bit of it that is just relevant to Surrey, that's the maps. Everything else is as relevant to a ladybird recorder down in Cornwall or in Sutherland. And one of the things that is completely unique about it is the book has been written on the basis of day-to-day -day notes, the diary notes of the report. And it is an absolutely wonderful book, beautifully written. It's, unlike my books, there's no scientific job. <laughs> so you don't get, oh gosh, I should know what that means. So it's just, you know, you can read it when you want to look into it because you found a particular lady, but, or you can read it as a bedtime read because it's fun. Um, I don't know how many of you have been over to this corner yet and picked it up. Um, what you actually do here is come <coughs> over, pick it up, perhaps at the pictures, look at the pictures, and go, that's it. Only £12? <laughs> <laughs> and give Roger or Alice or any, I don't know who's collecting the money, but give them a buy it. And in fact, I've looked at, I know three of the other ones, but I've looked at them all. They are all excellent books. So if there, any of you who haven't got the whole series, I do encourage you to get the whole series. And then you can sort of start to build up the collection over the next... If they're going to do all the orders of insects... Um, 80 years, Alistair. <laughs> <laughs> the thrips will be a good one. Yeah, that's exactly right. You can branch out into you know, some of these sort of more common garden boring things like mammals. I can't do that. Anyway, can I say congratulations and thanks to both Roger, his team of experts, and the Surrey Wildlife Trust, and say that the Ladybird of Surrey is, uh, Lady Birds of Surrey is launched. through this book, seeing how it has come out over the last few days, looking at it with a very sort of dispassionate, critical eye, I thought, hmm, hmm, hmm. And I came to the conclusion that this book will be carried by its photographs. Mm. Yes. Um, I think, I don't know if all the photographers are here, but David Elliott, Graham Collins, Andy Callow, and you, Mike Majerus, you've chipped in with some difficult ones that we couldn't. Are there any other photographers here? On my right, I have noticed and Jim, who took pictures of ladybirds that uh, none, of the, none of the rest of us could find, so it seemed. Um, so nearly all our photographers are here. They've taken some absolutely wonderful pictures, and I mean, I'm absolutely delighted to have allowed me to include them in the book. Thank you.